I realise the video I've made is rather long, so I'll summarise it now at the start. PNGs are very useful for things such as icons, logos and other images with not that many colours. I'll put on screen now a video that I made showing you how to compress PNGs even further that can allow some PNGs to, go, to be 10% of their original size. I also went over JPEGs, which are very useful for images, so such as photographs you take on your camera. And I'll put on screen now another video that I did showing you how to use online and offline tools to further compress JPEG to make the image files much smaller. GIFs should not be used on the web and GIF V should be used instead, but the idea of a GIF is it's an image that allows movement and GIF Vs are basically just videos without audio, so fulfill the same purpose. Hi, I'm Ace Lewis. So I've already done a few videos on ZeroNet. Now I'm going to do a few videos on images and image compression. So image and image compression is, is useful, especially for normal net and especially for zero net when you want to make your site very small because you want to compress your images without them looking terrible. So I'm going to go over the three main image types used on the web and then I'll go into more detail in specific videos of how to actually compress these images or these image types. So first of all you've got GIFs or GIFs, PNGs and JPEGs. I have a blog post which goes into more uh, in information, however this video will suffice for most people. So first of all, images that you see on your screen. All the images you see on your screen consist of three colours. So you've got red, green and blue. Now similar to paint. With these three colours you can make any colour that is on the monitor. In paint you need to use red, blue and yellow because it's a, a subtractive process but, but on your monitor it's an adductive process. So all the images that you see on your screen are actually a bunch of these pixels. However you don't want to see the actual individual pixels and under normal viewing distance if you don't zoom in very far you won't see individual pixels and you'll just see an image. So the first compression algorithm I'm going to go to is PNG. It's a very simple compression algorithm. For each pixel in the image, what it does is it saves the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. PNGs can optionally be have transparency layers, so you'll have three numbers if you have no transparency. However, if you have transparency, you have the alpha channel, so you'll have four numbers. So three, these three numbers go from 0 to 255, which is eight bits, and then that is the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue. So it saves it for the first pixel, then the next pixel, then the next pixel, then the next pixel. And then all this data is then compressed using um, a compression algorithm called deflate. It's similar to if you zip something up on your computer, it will get smaller. When you arrange these numbers together, that data is very highly compressible so that when you compress it using the deflate it gets you get a much smaller file size. PNGs are a lossless image format so they're brilliant to save images where you don't lose any quality at all. They are also very good for logos and icons and things made on the computer which will have one color repeated many times. That's because when you have one color repeated many times it's compressed more by the deflate algorithm. They're also the only widely used image format that supports transparency. So if you need any transparency in your image, you must use PNGs. The next image format I'll go on to is JPEGs. So the first step of JPEG compression is it converts images from RGB, so red, green and blue, to YCBCR. This is just another color space. It doesn't matter too much exactly what it is. However, it just allows for the images to be compressed more than if you compress them in RGB. Then what JPEG does is it splits your image up into many blocks. 
So these blocks can be 8 by 8, 16 by 16, or I think 32 by 32. However, 8 by 8 blocks is pretty much used throughout the whole time. Then it all it does is it applies Fourier analysis and does a discrete cosine transform. Now, once you've performed a discrete cosine transform, you can you get a grid which it contains 64 numbers. You can also do the inverse of it to get it the exact same number back. So at this point, from here to here, we've lost no information at all. I'll just show you here. This is an example of what the discrete cosine transform breaks the image up into. So as you see here, this is basically a flat image. And then you have one wave or half a wave, and then you have a whole wave, and then it one and a half and two, and that goes on like that. And then you also have it go down here. So here contains the least amount of information. And then as you go diagonally down to here, this is the image which contains the most information for each channel. Now, what you do is you apply quantization. So basically, what you do is you look at the images here and then you discard the ones over here. So the ones that contain a lot of information. And then when you read these into a file, you read them in zigzag format. So like from here downwards. And because you've set all these ones with high information to zero, so you just discarded them, you'll have many zeros repeated in a row. Now what you do is you then basically similar to PNGs and zipping files, you apply a compression algorithm. In this case, it's Huffman just because that was uh, open source and um, you can use it without paying. Because there are many zeros that repeat in a row, the image can be very compressed by the Huffman encoding. Now, this, because you've discarded the high information bits within the image, you do lose image quality, unlike regular PNGs. You also only have YCBCR and you don't have an alpha channel. So JPEG images do not support a transparency layer. This type of image format is ideal more so for images taken via a camera. So any image that you take normally on your phone or via a digital camera will normally be saved in JPEG compression because it's very effective at compressing the images. And also the high bits of information, so these little bits within the 8x8 blocks, when they get discarded, it doesn't adversely affect the image too much. However, successive compression of a JPEG image leads to artifacts like this. So the text here should be black and around it should be white. However, because the JPEG image has been shared online and shared again, this uh, compression has been successively applied to the image. If a PNG image is reshared and recompressed many times, because it's a loss less format, every image will be visually identical. Even with one JPEG compression from PNG to JPEG, you see these bits around and the fuzziness. Now in the main image, this fuzziness is not that apparent. However, if you want high quality images, you should really lean towards PNGs. The next image format that I'm going to talk about is GIFs. So GIFs, you must have seen them online. They're basically images that keep changing. So unlike JPEGs and PNGs, which have to be static, GIFs can actually change. GIFs are basically indexed images, which means that GIFs can only contain up to 256 colors. So if you go down into the blog post that I said, you could, when you view GIFs, you often see things like this where the colors are off 
and it looks very dotty. GIF images are also not as compressed as PNGs or JPEGs, so they are not ideal on the web. What GIFs were basically made for are little things like this, whereby you'd have a rotating image. Online, when you see GIFs now, most of them are actually GIF Vs, so dot GIF V at the end. And that just means that it's an MP4 video without audio. So most GIFs you see online now, on Twitter, on Telegram, or a lot of them shared on Reddit, are not GIFs, but actually GIF Vs, so MP4 videos. So if you right click on them, you can you know pause them and you can play them and you can change the speed. Now that is not normally available for GIFs and if you go to the video location you can see it's .webm but if you change it to .gif Imga will give you the GIF and you don't have the play or pause options available to you. GIF Vs, which are basically MP4 files, have a much, much smaller file size than regular GIFs. This means that they're ideal for the web and also ideal for ZeroNet because you have a smaller file to download, so it's faster and also you, if you wanna save a GIF V, you need to use less disk space. One website on ZeroNet is GIFTime, and these GIFs shared on GIFTime are actually GIF Vs. So basically, on the web or on ZeroNet, do not use GIFs, but use GIF Vs, because GIFs have a much larger file size and are much slower. On the screen now, I'll show a video of how you can use multiple tools online and offline to compress JPEG images. So like the images taken via a digital camera. I'll also share how you can compress PNGs both online and offline. I may in the future create a video showing you how to compress GIFs into GIF Vs, and if I do so, I'll put the link in the description. If you like this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more content like this, subscribe, and also comment, just tell me what you'd wanna see, and also if you have any problems or if you want me to elaborate more on any points I've made in any of my videos.